Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Captain C, the American Frigates, 1799 to 1815. This is a game designed by Mike Nagel and published by Legion War Games. I've said in the past I've always been fascinated by Age of Sail, mostly due to movies and some books, and I don't have any games on it. Then I picked up Flying Colors, which covers fleet tactics in the Age of Sail. Then I saw Captain C, and this is going to be individual ship-to-ship -ship combat. So I said, hey, I've got fleet combat. Let's go with ship-to-ship -ship combat so that way I can cover both aspects. That's what made this game so compelling to me and why I picked it up. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game is all about. Captain C is a moderate complexity game for two players who take the roles of captains of the original American frigates, Chesapeake, Congress, Constellation, Constitution, President, and United States, or their opponents from the British or French navies during the turn of the 19th century. All of the classic duels fought by these ships are represented in detail. Unlike other Age of Sail games that focus on fleet actions, Captain C puts you on the deck of a single ship with the responsibility of leading her to victory. You must maneuver against the wind and your opponent to achieve optimum firepower, as well as manage your crew as they scramble to man the guns, work the rigging, and repair battle damage all while being hammered by burning shot and flying splinters. Can you keep your crew in good order, or will you be the first to strike the colors? The action of the game is driven by control of the weather gauge. This is done in a unique fashion by moving ships relative to both the wind and each other, stressing the benefit of position. The ship with the better position has greater flexibility and maneuver as each player predetermines his ship's movement through a simple action selection process that does not require pencil and paper to track. Players must also allocate available crew points, a diminishing commodity as a ship takes damage, to man the guns, rigging, or other actions that the situation might mandate. A deck of action cards provides period flavor and swings of fortune. Throughout a turn, you as captain are bombarded with difficult decisions that determine the fate of your ship. Included with the game are 10 scenarios, and at the bottom here we see an example of the components and of course the map behind that. The game components comes with a 22 by 34 inch map, 176 counters, 24 order blocks, 55 playing cards, 16 ship data cards, 3 octagonal ship markers, 4 player aid cards, 16 page rulebook, and a 24 page playbook. It is for 2 players, game complexity is medium, and it is medium low solitaire suitability obviously because we got cards so that's going to change things up. So let's take a look inside and see what we get. All right, we get some dice and several baggies, deck of cards, the octagonal pieces that will be for the ships, a bunch of wooden blocks, stickers for those blocks and instructions on how to apply the stickers. We've got a little sell sheet for some upcoming Legion War Games. Our player aid cards. Rule book. Playbook. Counter sheet. And our map. So let's set up the map and take a closer look at the game. Now we'll take a look at the map that comes with the game. It is going to be a 19 by 19 grid square that you're going to be maneuvering on. In the center you have the wind compass which is going to tell you the wind direction at the time. On the left hand side we have the impulse track and then we have a reload track down below that. On the right hand side we have a status track and then on the right hand side we have the control panel, one on either side for both players. This is going to tell you the options available to you based on the wind direction that you're running on. So for example, A or B is broad reaching, C is going to be running, D or E is going to be beam reaching, F or G is going to be beating, H is in irons, and then there is straining. You have the tracking process down at, below that, and then at the bottom you have an explanation of the control panel. Next we'll take a look at the components that come with the game. We have these standard wooden blocks that you're going to be using, and you're going to be placing these stickers on them. We have stickers for the United States, Great Britain, and France. 
On one side, you'll place the flag, and on the other, you'll place the maneuver that you're going to be using. When you put it on the map, you're going to have uh, basically just this facing the opponent. You don't want them knowing what order you're going to be issuing this time. Then when you reveal it, you just flip it over and, and it shows so they can see what it is you're doing. And remember, we saw in the control panel the options that are available to you based on the wind direction. You will choose the maneuver that you're going to follow. And these are going to represent the ships in the game. We've got the US, the French, and the British here. You're going to have these octagonal pieces. You're going to place the sticker on top of them, and you're going to use these to maneuver across the map and also to change direction as need be based on the wind so that way you know the maneuver that you're taking as well as seeing the relative position between you and your opponent's ship. Next, we'll take a look at a few examples of the cards that we have in the game. At the top, we have the Play Now cards. Below that, we have the Hold card. Just like the name suggests, the Play Now card is immediately played upon drawing and the Hold card can stay in your hand. Each player has a hand size limit based on the crew morale. It's either going to be four, five, or six for unfit, fair, or handy. When the card is played, you will play the event, like on this one here, Sudden Gust. Reduce smoke in each square by one. Explosion. Play on a ship that is on fire and roll a die. The result is a number of hull hits immediately applied against that ship. Apply the hits evenly across all sections. All hits must be applied. One crew hit is also applied. Then reshuffle the deck after play. At the bottom we have the hold cards. These stay in your hand until played. And here we have the event add plus one to the crew status modifier for the duration of the turn. And then cloud of splinters. Reduce the morale effects table die roll by two. The other option you have with these hold cards, as you can see on the bottom, is you can discard any of them to add plus one to any single die roll. And we'll take a look at the play raid that comes with the game along with the ship status sheets. At the top we have the damage effects table, below that we have the morale effects table, and then the combat process spelled out for you in the bottom right. And on the back we have the movement tables, at the top we have the base movement point table, below that we have the hold type bonus table, and then we have the sequence of play listed out for you to follow along during the play. And we'll take a look at the ship status sheets. This is for the United States ship Constitution. You see at the top it has the name, and then next to that it has the number of guns that it has. Below that it tells you the hull type is fast, hull strength is firm, giving you a plus one, firepower is four, and the damage capacity is 66. The damage capacity is basically the number of hits that you can take before being destroyed. Along the left hand side we have the crew points, then we have the crew quality, sail state, rigging change, sailing, damage control, and the crew morale. On the right hand side we have broadside tracks for both port and starboard, fore and aft. We also have forward chasers, stern chasers, damage control, the type of shot you're going to be using, as well as your rigging points. On the back we get the Chesapeake, the Congress, the Constellation, the President, and lastly for the United States we get the aptly named United States. And for the British we have the Belvedere. As you can see the points are going to be different than you're seeing with the other ships. That is going to show you the size differences between the ships. Which one's bigger and which ones are smaller. Then we have the Curlew, the Endymion, the Galatea, the Guerriere, the Macedonian, and who doesn't like a hot cup of Java? And the Shannon is the last for the British. And Linsurgent. And the final status sheet, La Vengeance. And we'll take a look at the counter sheet that comes with the game. We have some general administrative counters, like here the points assigned as well as smoke, and then more along the bottom. Then we have faction specific counters, the United States, the French, and the British along the bottom. Next we'll take a look at the rules. This is a 16 page full color rule book. On the front cover we have the table of contents listing out all the different sections for you to easily reference during play. On the inside we have the key concepts, wind position, heading, impulses, ship display cards, the control panels, bridge cards, all the things we've already looked at. It's going to explain all of them to you here. Then we have setup, how to set up and get started. Then we have explanation of the hull type, hull strength, crew quality, crew morale, forward and stern chasers, the fighting sail, medium sail, crew task, rigging points, crew points, gunnery track, and the shot boxes all explained to you. Have the sequence of play 
on the top right. And then we have assigning crew, how you assign crew to the, doing the different tasks on the ship. Rigging damage control, hull damage control, gunnery, melee, all these sorts of things. Even a little hint tossed in. Then we have determined initiative, determining movement rates, the activation cycle, maneuvering. Explains to you all the steps for maneuvering, stacking. You have some illustrated examples in here. Map edge, reloading, firing, range, broadside sections attacking, firing procedures. I'll explain to you here. And grappling, empty impulses, repeat for next impulse, and melee. Then we have bonus move, housekeeping phase, and then game end and victory conditions, as well as an explanation of the scenario cards. And then we have multi-ship options, explained to you on the back if you're looking to play with more than just two ships. And lastly, we'll take a look at the playbook. This is a 24-page full-color book. On the front cover, we have the very abbreviated table of contents. We have a comprehensive example of play, designer's notes, and the scenario cards. Start off on the inside of the front cover with the comprehensive example of play. We've got some illustrated examples along with the supporting text to walk you through the turn so you can more easily understand all parts of the game. Looks really good. It's going to walk you through it pretty comprehensively, as it says. Let me get to the designer's notes. And then we have the scenario cards. Constellation versus Lin Sargent. Constellation versus La Vengeance. Constitution versus Guerriere. President versus Belvedere. President versus Belvedere again. Well, that's the alternate multi-ship option. Then we have the United States versus the Macedonian. Constitution versus the Java. I love the pictures at the bottom. Chesapeake versus the Shannon, the President versus the Endymion. And then on the back we have the Congress versus the Galatea, as well as the Congress versus the Curlew to finish out the scenarios. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Captain C, the American Frigates, 1799 to 1815. This is a game designed by Mike Nagel and published by Legion War Games. Well, Legion always does an amazing job with their games, and this is no different. Fantastic components, very easy to understand. The rules look to be nice and clean. You have the playbook, which gives you a good extended example of play, as well as all of your scenarios in there and the designer's notes. Love the blocks idea. I think that's kind of neat. Now, from a solitaire perspective, that may make it a little bit different, but you just play with mostly open information, take your cards, maybe even kind of scramble the blocks up a bit. But that, again, can come into, it's like, what was that captain thinking if he just, you know, if you randomly choose a block that really doesn't fit? What you probably end up doing is having to choose two things that you would like to do, maybe three things, and then just randomly assign from there. And the same with the cards. That's just part of it. Or you can just do the whole open information like I tend to do and just enjoy the narrative that unfolds. But this is going to be a really fun face-to-face -face game. And if they get a Vassal module done for this, you can play online anytime with your friends and definitely have a head-to-head -head game. But like I said at the beginning, I have Flying Colors, and that's going to cover fleet actions. Captain C, when I saw it, I was like, man, I got to get this because I love fleet actions. That's going to be really cool. But I love the idea of drilling down really deep into the tactical level, ship to ship. Just like we see in the movies, reading the books, it's captain against captain, ship against ship, crew against crew. That is where the big high drama is, and I think this is going to capture that really well. And only 16 pages of rules, so it's not like it's going to be a 100-page rulebook, 50-page rulebook, nothing like that. It looks fairly simple to grok, which means you can get it on the table faster and get to enjoying the experience of Captain C. And it looks like this is a system that can be played across multiple different factions. We've got the American frigates. We can do the British. We can do the Spanish, the French. We can really drill down and cover the whole of the Age of Sail, and I hope that is what the plans are for Mike Nagel in the future. And I'm looking forward to getting this one on the table and playing both solitaire as well as head-to-head. -head. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you'd be curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.